Initially, I had thought of beginning the interview sessions with interviewing some of you. But now I do know a lot many of you. So perhaps I would plunge into the interview skills straight away. But before I really move into it, again, I always call it an attitudinal shift. When we go for an interview, when our students go for an interview, what they are looking at is money. All of us, you know, we look at money. And we all why for the topmost organization. When we don't compete there, we look for the second ladder. We are not even there. And perhaps towards the end, there is a handful who are waiting for placements. Very tough time for them. Very tough time for them. And as role models and moderators, as coordinators for this course, it is very important that we tell them that it is not the end of the road. And believe me, I have gone through phases. I have seen things. So when I talk, it is not, you won't find any theories in my uh, depiction out here because I practice what I preach. I have two sons. One of them is employed. He did, he's a mechanical engineer. And as a mom, I did want him to work with one of the best organizations here. But he went and he's pursuing a career in an educational firm. And he said, Mom, I'm very happy here. I'm not making much money. But I'm very happy here and I'm learning a lot. So the focus has to be what you are looking at. There are some who are working with very good organizations, but are planning to leave their jobs because of the 16 hour schedule. So, and this generation, it wants money, it wants life also out of that money. And therefore, when we teach those students, when we mold those students, we must tell them that when you, are, when you go sitting for an interview, first sit back and think what you want out of life. Are you going just for the brand name or are you going for something that is going to satisfy you. That is first thing. Another thing, as we said, there is a lot of unpredictability. It's very difficult to say how you can crack an interview. We, can, we are only training, we are only training our students. We are not training our interviewers. Right? We are not training our interviewers. So to say that this is the process by which you can nail an interview, I would be hypocritical if I say that because I do not know how the interview is going to shape. But what I can tell them is, I don't know whether you've watched the Three Idiot movie. Yes. Yeah? I loved the way that person with a five-pointer or a six-pointer came and said, Itni mushkil se pair torwa karke to. I hope, how many of you understand Hindi out here? I shall translate it otherwise. You know, something like that. After much difficulty and after going through so much hardship, I have gained my integrity and confidence. I'm not going to let it go like that. If you think you like me, take me. Otherwise, I'll find something different for myself. Okay? So, at this juncture, you may say, again, madam, that is just, you're talking theory again. But when we speak with our students now, that is something which comes out. We have to tell them that interview is an assimilation and not an elimination process. I'm looking for something. I was looking for a TA. I was told I need to have a TA. And I just wondered, okay, my God, who do I select? And my fair lady, she said, ma'am, I find it so difficult talking in front of other people. And I said, there cannot be anyone else better than her. And here she is, so confident. Ayu Punam, thank you so much. That's how you mentor. Okay? I could have cho chosen somebody, my seniors, some of my uh, senior students also. But that is how we work towards 
assimilation process and not the elimination process. She must be, you know, I had a very busy period. I am having a very busy period. And perhaps every single night, I would put something up, Poonam, could you do this? With her workload, she still would do it. Maybe she must be cursing me. What is this, Dr. Jha? You're just putting everything, slides, all slides, uploading things at random. But now when she'll go back and work on those slides, she will see what Professor Murthy was talking about. Then she was talking about the elevator pitch. There has to be a lot of recasting. There has to be a lot of editing before you finally come to that elevator pitch she was talking about. We'll talk about it later. They test you for what you know and how well you know. Do not fake or beat around the bush. Be sincere in an interview. She had said it again. Professor Murthy had said it. Practice it in front of the mirror. She had made a very interesting point. Put your strongest point out there, OK, in your elevator pitch, so that you could steer the interview around that. My brother-in-law, 20, 25 years back, he's a very eminent doctor now. He was in his final year of medicine. My dad-in-law, again, a very eminent uh, doctor. And he's, you could say, Kalazar, if you know. The disease Kalazar. He's the whole soul, you could say. Whatever, whatever medicine is in the market is being tested in his clinic first. So this brother-in-law of mine said, Bhabi, I don't have any issues with the interview. You know, all those people who are coming, I'm going to steer the interview towards Kalazar, and there I'm the boss. OK? What happened in the interview? They all knew that he was the son of this doctor. None of them allowed him to talk even for 30 seconds on Kalasar. He was tested in every other field but Kalasar. There is always that risk. Okay? So when you keep on harping about something, it could be that somebody in the panel would say, Acha, hai, ye to hai, you have done it, so why do I need to ask it? What was your second best subject? Right? Because in a couple of seconds, we know what you've done. So always be prepared for what you are putting out there. And you should have a contingency plan as well. Right? Do not memorize those. Recently itself, we were in an interview, and somebody came, and it was one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. He continued for two minutes. And we could say that he had mugged it up. But then it was quite good because we felt at least he has worked on it and tried to present something of himself. So it doesn't go wrong. If you have an elevator pitch, it doesn't go wrong. Do not attempt manipulation. That is where you make it or mar it. Anything which you feel I mean, our students normally, they may have done a little thing in a project, but they would put it as they have done the entire project themselves. Please, we need to ask our students not to do that if they have worked on a specific aspect of the project. Let them say so, that they have worked on this specific aspect of the project. Because once they start asking, they would feel that you have more to hide. And then what they do, in one of the interviews, we literally checked the credentials of the student. OK? So we need not. We have to tell the students, be honest in your resume. Be honest when you're talking. Because those sitting on the other side of the table are not fools. They have been in your shoes. They have been there, done that. So today, please don't try to manipulate them. They'll be better manipulators than you could ever think at that particular stage. Sir, the content part is extremely important for an interview. Communication is important. But then how you present your content over here, I feel, is more important. For an academic interview, if I'm there, I normally say, OK, fine. If you think he's sound on the content, I shall handle the communication part. But if we have a good mix, but if we have people, nine pointers are there. Right? They're all nine pointers, let us say who have come for the interview. 
And if somebody has better communication skill and you have to make one selection, who would you go with? Better communication. Better communication. And that is why we are trying to strike a balance somewhere. Body language has to be positive, and we are going to talk about it now. Confidence and sincerity. Over here, I'm not going to dwell more upon the content part, simply because if I have mentioned for our SOM, if, I have, if we have mentioned that 99 percentile is the cutoff, most of you who's there would be at 99, right? With a 99 percentile, what more am I going to ask you about the content? You would more or less be same. So the differentiation is on how you are applying your content, the application of what you have learned in those years. So when I give you a question, it would be the students need to be told that they should be prepared for the application of the course and not merely for what they did. How did they apply? Did they apply? They may have worked on the projects. Did they apply it anywhere? They need to be aware of that. If they have not applied, no ma'am, uh, no sir, uh, we did not get the chance to apply. So do you think it can be applied? What made you select that topic? So these are the questions which we need to throw at our students and help them prepare for the interviews. Every word that they have mentioned in the resume leads to a question. Therefore, the resume needs to be scanned. Champion, table tennis. Okay. Champion, where? Was it a national championship or was it a school championship? Don't mislead. Kinesics in an interview. Postures, gestures, facial expression. Often I have been asked, how do we enter? How do we sit? Where should our hands be? What posture should we have during our interview? And my class today, my session today, would be just a reference to it. Something which our students need to know. Because what I have felt is they are solid on the content. It is just the posture or the confidence that they are worried about. <sighs> Again, you've made, obviously, you are allowed to enter. Come there and perhaps wait for a couple of seconds. The interviewer is bound to ask you to give a seat. Okay? You put your feet firmly on the foot. Is it okay? Your hands loosely in your lap. If you're carrying something heavy, let us suppose you're carrying a folder and a laptop as well. Put your laptop here. The interviewer's website. I'm sitting here. I'm still not a part of the organization. So what we do is, I need to put my folder on the table. So you need to seek the permission of the interviewer. May I? And you would say, yeah, yeah, feel comfortable. So then you put it on the table. Now that portion becomes you because you have sought the permission. I am going about, you know, the corporate interviews where business, where kinesics are, is very important. I'm talking about those. Ladies, we normally cross our feet at the ankle or put it very firmly towards the back. Our hands, just as her posture is, loosely held like this. Remember one of my interviews? I went there and I was asked to make myself comfortable. Gosh, I just hope it doesn't fall. So I sat like this. Okay? I was very nervous. Very nervous. I didn't know what to do. I was very nervous. And I had a PhD by then. And yet, I was very nervous. I was an English student. I was an ex JNU alumni, and yet I was very nervous. I sat there, and my interviewer says, uh, make yourself comfortable. Twice he said, and then he says, Lena, 
Make yourself comfortable. I'm not going to ask you to do so again. And then I realized that I was sitting on the edge of the chair. I made myself comfortable. It happens when we are nervous, we do not realize. Okay? So when our interviewer says, make yourself comfortable, make yourself comfortable. Okay? Uh, post that. It is all. Why do I need to talk about these things? Because some of you who allow yourself to adapt to the situation subconsciously act that way, but some of you who are very nervous needs to be told like Hanumanji was told, well, you have this potential to fly, fly from Lanka and get that Sanjeevani booty. You need to be told that it's within you. You have to act like that. When you are asking a question or you are answering, you lean a little forward. Okay? Or perhaps if the interview goes beyond 20 minutes and the interviewer relaxes, you can actually move on to 120 degree. Let's move on to the postures. Do not slouch, but relax a bit to avoid looking rigid and authoritative. Any question here, because it's a very important thing. Any question here? My question is, sometimes uh, do the students who are facing interview, uh, should they be uh, honest in answering? For example, sometimes their ethics are tested. Okay. For example, there might be a question like, if you are selected for our company, are you going to lie for us? If I could lie for you, I could be lying right now as well. Okay? If I'm expected to lie then, perhaps I could be expected to lie now also. Okay. That could be one of the answer with absolute integrity on your face. We need to be prepared. Since we know the answers, we have such a fantastic you know, group of people here. If only we could share the answers that comes within us and put them on the Moodle or put them for everybody to share, we would have, you know, a set of questions and then a set of answers as well. Yeah. Ma'am, there can be another question. Hmm? For example, do you have any other offer at the moment? Or have you been attending any other interviews? Uh, we did throw the questions to our uh, students and I feel this generation is very clear about things. They answer in the affirmative. If they have an opinion, they let them know. I personally feel that they should let them know. If they have an offer from an institute which is graded higher than them, it gives a good impression. If it is lower than them, again, it's good. Not an issue, at least they have an offer. Okay? I am more for, you know, the ethical side of it. Because with all the transparencies, patterns evolving, everything being linked to your Aadhaar card and things, I think we need to be more transparent in our dealings today. And that's how we'll change a generation. Any other question? We should not bluff in the interview. They'll not allow you. They'll not allow you. They can see through you. I told you, the body language expert is not a body language expert for nothing. Yeah, he's a psychologist. And the moment before lying, perhaps you do this, you do this, or maybe your eyes. Yes, the eye contact will not be there, and in that instance, you would know that you are lying. So don't lie. That body language expert is actually a lie tester, lie detector out there. Another thing that really goes is. Uh, you know what? At times, you could be in the habit of it. At times, it could be sheer sure nervousness. Uh, just one suggestion we could give to our students is think of some very positive association out there. Very positive association. I am putting forward my own interviews just to you know, let you know that I have been through that process. My English honors interview, the first person to get in and here I am, sitting out there. My entire, I'm otherwise a confident person, very confident person, but that was the first time, I guess, there was a formal interview, and it would, it would be held only for the English department. My entire body was shaking. It was like this. 
I tried to hold the pen. It was going tick, 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 tick. I could feel it. I could feel it. I could literally feel it. And the interviewer says, what's your name? Looks at the paper, the sheet that has been given. Lena Khan. And then he says, are you a relative of Cengiz Khan? <laughs> oh, college days. All of us were very impressed by Imran Khan, who was playing then. The moment he says Cengiz Khan, I thought of, oh, only he could have said uh, Imran Khan. And the very thought of Imran Khan was, you know, was there to, you know, lighten me up. As the entire interview went very smooth. What I mean to say is, don't think about the, I mean, we, we should not be telling our students to think about their boyfriends, girlfriends, their idols. But then, you know, something with which they could associate positive thoughts, it helps to calm you. Okay? Um, is there any technique for that? Because many of them are having, as you are telling, postures. Many of them, like, pretend that they are old, actually. But inside, there will be a big shivering. I think everybody knows, actually. So if it is the case, uh, what sort of things which we can impart our to, to our students to make? Before the interview, it is very important to tell them it is not the end of the road, first thing. Also tell them that you may or may not get through the interview, but the onus may not always lie on you. It is about the interviewer. He may be looking for a different profile altogether, and you may not fit into the profile despite everything that you know. So there could be some other job waiting for you. It is very important to see that their confidence remains intact. No, and anything, another thing, anything is, anything is there to uh, actually pretending is different, okay, right? As such, you are showing that you are uh, not you shivering. You have to. How long will yeah. you pretend? Yeah, that's the thing how I'm telling you. How long you will pretend? No, it is there. But is there anything like which we can control and we can really become bold and going to the interview confident? Is there okay. anything like that? Okay, okay. Students, you should face the interview, not for the job. Right. Face the interview. Face the questions. So that is first confidence level can be high. Right? right. Besides that, because in our classrooms, uh, in our nonverbal communication, we are showing up a lot of the body language and make right. the practice. When we are going to conduct that uh, PI sessions, at that time we are convincing them. So by these things, we can develop their confidence level. When the confidence level will come to face the interview only, not for the job I'm going to talk about it. Right. So when we are going to convince the students, to face the interview. At the time, they will face the interview with the full of confidence. And partially, we may not be severing or like these things. Thank, Thank you. you. It's my opinion. Thank you very much for your opinion. It's uh, quite a valuable uh, suggestion. What he wants to know that despite everything, if you're shivering out there, what are you going to do? Madam, I have one point to add. Okay. So just uh, to tell how the confidence of the student should be enhanced. <laughs> Like first, the student uh, should get prepared that, like uh, many students will go to the interview that I should get the job. Right. But uh, a feeling should be cultivated among them that I should give the tough competition in the interview. So then certainly he'll get a fair chance of uh, g getting more success in that. Yeah. So where uh, he can uh, decrease like uh, his stress in the interview. Stress level, so, yes. Uh, that this will be certainly right. help in. Uh, getting enhanced his uh, confidence. Right. Another very important and technical point uh, for his would be, you may be shivering, but if you know the answer to the first question, perhaps a lot of confidence will come back. Tell me something about yourself. And that is why we say, rehearse. The moment the person would say, tell me something about yourself, you are in your somewhat comfort zone. If you have said that thing properly, perhaps your confidence level will be back. And if there are smiles, stress will, come. stress will definitely, because you have scaled it. And that is why we need to have our elevator pitch yeah. or uh, our answer to the question. I have a question. Yeah. Yes? Uh, it's mainly the fear of failure. I think uh, that makes them... Fearful. Uh, yeah. And for that, what we can have, uh, we can train them to have second plan. So plan two, when we have plan two, like already you be prepared for, okay, if I'm get selected, it's okay, otherwise. So I think uh, that may help them to come out of this fear. Yes, it's all about money. If we make it in the first go, if we make it about in the best of the organization. Excuse me, ma'am. 
chest. One last point. Ma'am, sir is asking how to uh, make the students confident. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would like to uh, make him understand very clearly. This is also the part of making confident. How to make the students confident? This is the very first part and very first stage of a process to bring them uh, into kind of process. How to appear? This is a kind of uh, a Ghana is there, Bano Tera, whatever is. So <laughs> this is the appearance. If they can't uh, appear with a kind of personality, so next round will not start with. This is the very important part and is integral part of interview. Without this, we can't go to the second stage and third one. Okay. So Thank I'm you so much, Sai. Thank you so much. What we had talked about was the posture, how we sit. We know the other things. How we <coughs> lean when we are talking, how we lean when we are listening to the person. Now we are going to talk about the gestures. Uh, the interviewer is asking some questions. I don't realize, right? It's going. I don't realize. But, and then the interviewer says, ah, your pen. And I put it down. It's an interview. You know it's going to get money for you. You know it's going to shape your career. And therefore, it is a conscious thing. We have to become aware of the fact that we are moving into a business parlance. And we have to take certain things consciously. We cannot say that I do not realize whether my pen is going tick, 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 tick or not. We have to tell ourselves that since I do it, I shall not let the pen be in my hand. I'll keep it there. And I shall have to keep telling myself, okay, post every answer that I, the rough work which I try out there, I'll keep my pen out there. I used to forget my keys. So somebody told me, when you put your key somewhere, wait for a second, register it here, and then go. Similarly, we have to, it is, it's going to get me money in laps. And so if I have to make myself aware of the tick, 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 I'll make myself aware of the tick, tick. Some of us gesticulate a lot. Okay? Especially when we are talking about something which is our passion. GDPI is my passion. I've been doing it for long. Business communication is my passion. I've been doing it for long now. Okay? But since... But because I have been doing it for long, I get so involved in it that I don't realize that I'm all the time gesticulating so much. Okay? We need to put our hands in control. We need to again be aware that gesticulations are appropriate, especially in professional atmosphere, only to make a point, only to prove a point. Okay? You should do a bit of gesticulation, otherwise you would appear rigid. Okay? A robotic. But then you should not go overboard with your gesticulation. Sorry. Ma'am, uh, which one is important uh, from the interview success perspective? Mm -hmm. Is it answering questions in the interview or handling questions? Both. But normally they say handling handle question, question when you will handle bring question. greater uh, success. No, I don't know. <laughs> they say handling. If you handle the first question, then all the other questions will be in your area of control. No. Please do not underestimate the interviewers. We need to tell our students, please do not underestimate your interviewers. You answer the first question right, and you set the tone for yourself. You are confident. You also set the tone for the rest of the interview. It could depend on who the interviewer is. We do not know. Okay? So what happens is both are important. When you say, how would you handle this question? We have selected a couple of students who said, sorry, sir, we do not know anything about it. Okay? What happens is that person may have been answering one after the other, the questions. And then we take the tempo to a level where he realizes that he doesn't know. It is beyond his comprehension. He's not studied that. It is beyond his comprehension. He has been trying it, he tries it, does a few application, and then says, sorry, sir, I do not know about it. I will take that person. Why? Because he had shown a logical progression. Not I, I think most of us would go by that. He has shown a logical progression, and then he says that I do not know, 
perhaps I'll go, I have a learning process here, I'll go back and find about it. So now I know that this person is somebody who is interested in learning as well. His learning has not stopped with the college. So handling becomes important as well. Okay? Fiddling with hair, pen, or any other object conveys nervousness, causes distraction. And uh, moving on to the next one. Eye contact, I think I have uh, given you several uh, displays of what eye contact can do during the group discussion also. <coughs> Maintain eye contact. This is again another question which I have often come across. Madam, what should be the duration of the eye contact? Actually what happens is, we have TCS, we have Reliance, we have Lehman Brothers, we have Slumberger, Okay, a global mix of interviewers. And depending on the profile that they are interviewing, a lot from uh, the multinational banks as well, and depending on the profile that they want, we have the interviewers. Now what happens? Usually we are getting a little into the cross-cultural communication out here. If we have somebody from the West, especially from the American, United States of America, and if somebody who has been working out there and he is there to interview you, perhaps he has been groomed into a culture wherein whenever you talk, you make the entire point looking at the person. Okay? The Western world, our culture, I still remember since childhood till now, I cannot look into the eyes of my father and prove a point or make a point. I still can't do that. We have not been tutored into that. In the corporates, multinationals, startups in India, still we cannot do so with our seniors. So we have come with, you know, program, you could say, or a policy, wherein, a process rather, wherein we say 10 to 15 minutes of eye contact. If you have asked a question, okay, and I'm answering to you, maybe I would start answering the question, I would look at you for 10 to 15 minutes, 10, 10 seconds, Okay, and then perhaps she's the other one on the panel. I would move my gaze to her or I would just wink for a moment and then resume the communication. To be on the safer side, we normally tell our students maybe 10 seconds of eye contact, a brief closure and then once again resume it. Practice voice modulation. I think we need to record, especially the first one, the elevator pitch that we've talked about. This works. Pause and breathe before answering a question. Let us suppose, and I do give it, the stress interview. If I know that the student is, you know, he's well-oriented, so I do wish to push things further. And over there, we need to tell the students that if you feel that things are actually burning now, or about to burn, they are blazing. Condition yourself to the fact that perhaps it is a stress interview. And if it is a stress interview, believe me, the chances of you being selected is more than the rest of them. They'll only give a stress interview, one thing, if in the very beginning you have acted smart, over smart, or they have gauged you for your potential, and they would be, they are just trying to see how further can we take things. Okay? So there, in a stress interview, or when perhaps you feel you need time to think, tell them so. Because you would often come across interviewers who would say, ah, take your time. So we need to tell our students that if there is something for which you need to conjecture thoughts, you need to bring thoughts together, take your time, and work. There may be a time in an interview that you've been so nervous, you've been so tensed, and now that you are comfortable, you need a glass of water. Normally it is there, you could ask the interviewer for that glass of water. Because again, just as, as I said, a GD is about finding certain things, an interview is also about Presenting yourself in the best of manner. So if that glass of water, if that sip of water can help, avail of it. 
the interviewer is not as high-headed as you think him to be. More than you believe in that particular mantra, more than you, he is under stress of hiring you. One good hire and his company makes a lot of money. One wrong hiring and the company suffers. So we need to tell these things to our students. That brings up their confidence. You know, for business communication, for any communication, be it letter writing, be it report writing, be it GD meetings, GDPI, whatever, there has to be an introduction, there has to be a body, there has to be a conclusion. Remember our essay writing days? Even there we used to have these things. So now we are at the last leg of our interviews. And we often come across the question again from the student sector, how should we conclude it? At times, we feel that it has ended abruptly, very abruptly. The questions may have been asked, and at times, the interviewer asks you, would you have any question to, would you like to ask any question? OK? Stay poised. Take a quick mental review of what all you have said. And if there have been any instance where you felt like asking a question, if yes, ask the question. Otherwise, two category. If you are confident, in our, we come across, not came, we come across these things in our interviews. I think that is the latest trend these days. If you've really had a learning experience through the interview, let them know that it was a learning. Many a times you realize that, okay, perhaps they are looking for a different profile and I may not even get there. And yet, if it has been a learning experience, let them know about it. Why? Because you, if you end it on a positive note, perhaps the corporate would put you in the rating list. They might need somebody later, somebody like you later. So always end it on a positive note. Do not say it if you don't mean it. That is very cliche. Normally what happens, we go for the cat uh, preparations, we go for the GRE, GMAT preparations. Over there we have classes on GDPI, and there we are taught so many things which we actually have to unlearn when we move into the corporate field. So be honest, if you've really learned something, tell them. It feels good, we are also human beings, you know, all of us, we are human beings. We may be sitting on the other side of the, the table, but if somebody praises us, we like it, don't we? Yeah? The last, but not the least. Again, a very important aspect of the interviews is do not initiate or offer a handshake. Imagine, in a day, I may have to interview 50 of them. And each one comes and shakes hands with me. By the time it ends, I will have to go for a manicure, I guess, or maybe a massage. That person shakes hands with just one, with us just once, okay? But we have to shake hands with them all together 50 times. So do not initiate. Also, it is an indicator. Normally, if you've done pretty well and we want you in, we initiate it. So that's an indicator. We must tell our students not to offer handshakes. Be gracious even if you feel raw as it may have been a stress interview and greet politely before taking leave. I wasn't once and it paid off for me. Long back I had gone for an interview. It was just the beginning of my career, it was just the very beginning of my consultancy career and uh, I went there and there he was sitting you don't fit the resume. You, your qualifications don't fit the resume. Yeah, so why are you here? That's how the interview had begun. Why are you here? You don't fit the resume, your position. I was like taken aback from, I, I had a long day that day, and I had come from there, directly from my workplace for the interview. So I said, okay, you called me. That is why I'm here. No, no, it doesn't suit. It doesn't fit in here. I didn't know what to do. Well, if you're here, you may as well sit down. Yeah, I sat down. And then he says, again, he makes a comment. 
very long back. He makes some comment. And I couldn't take it. As it is, I had a very long day. I was already in job. What I did was I just picked my bag and I literally told him, listen, here I was <coughs> trying to teach your students. I could teach your teachers also. And it was like, then it struck, okay, it was for a cool. You know, at that time, perhaps uh, intermediate kind of a thing. Okay. So I said, okay, fine. And then I just picked up my bag and I said, thank you very much. And I moved out. And then he realized, okay, fine, sorry, something has gone amiss. He said, no, no, please sit down. Ah, uh, could you just bang the bell and ask for some tea for me? So at times, why did I bring that topic? Stress interview is something different. But we need to tell our students that if in an interview there is something which hurts them personally, you have to differentiate between the two. If there is something which hurts them personally, he or she must take a stand that shows the integrity of the person being interviewed. I think during a GD, the point of submission came. At no point we need to sacrifice our ethics, something we believe in, for monetary benefits. That is something we need to let our students know. We had been talking about the elevator pitch, and I said, it has to be different. On a slide, it doesn't look too good. OK, because we have several lines up there. But one of the slides is for when I applied earlier. So this is the one I would send in my resume. The paradigm shift from English to business communication. If you could just read it for a couple of minutes, and then I'll move to the other one, the second one which perhaps is more suited for the book I plan to publish. Once they know their throughput, know the inventory, the throughput is bound to increase. That's a perfect pitch for a technical institute. If I'm opting for a human resource thing, or if I'm uh, the HA humanities, perhaps I would tweak with it, and I would write something different. So your elevator pitch would change. OK? Why? We need to change it. We have amassed so much of it, so much of experience. So obviously, we need to showcase it. On that note, it's really been an honor to be here with the Brains of India, people on mission. Thank you so much for being so patient. Pleasure.